Hello, I'm Dr. Larry Lytle, speaking to you from the Laser Learning Center in Rapid City, South Dakota. Today's lesson is on wavelength and power density. In the beginning, there was a big bang. God saw the light and said that is good. So everything in the universe is a wave of light. It's measured on electromagnetic spectrum. From your left, the very shortest waves are cosmic waves, then are the gamma waves, then are the X-rays, then the ultraviolet waves, and right in the middle, the narrow, very narrow band are the visible light rays, and to the right of visible light are your infrared waves, and then are your microwaves, and finally your X-rays. So everything in the universe falls on that spectrum. Almost all low-level lasers are right in the middle, in the very narrow spectrum of visible light, and slightly to the right, into the infrared. Now some saunas are in the far infrared, but most of the lasers are in the short or near infrared range. Now when you're measuring a wave, it's a, it's, it's a wave and it measures from peak to peak. And those waves are measured actually in millimeters, but since that's such a large number, they have reduced that to nanometers, which is one one thousandth of a millimeter. So every wave that is from tip to tip is one one thousandth of a millimeter long, and that's called nanometers. So that is what identifies the name of your laser. So if someone would say, I have a 660 nanometer laser, they mean it's 660 nanometers from tip to tip, and that would be a red light laser. Now when you're talking about the nanometers of the waves, we're talking about visible light. The visible light is about 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. On either side of that, you don't see the light. On the left side is ultraviolet. Now, all laser scientists know, or laser physicists know, that when you get in the ultraviolet range of 320 nanometers, that that particular range can cause cancer. There's one company that is actually selling an ultraviolet laser telling you that it kills cancer cells. I can tell you this. As a laser physicist, I would never use an ultraviolet laser on any one of my family or my children. There's too much risk in knowing whether you're going to enhance a cell or actually kill a cell. So ultraviolet is a rather dangerous wavelength to stay away from. That's why we have sunscreens to screen out certain ultraviolet rays of the sun. But in the visible light range from 400 to 700, that is a very safe range of light. And also in the near infrared, which goes from 700 on up to about 1,000, that's also a safe range of light. Now that we have the light, how much power can you put behind that light? Any light, if you put enough power behind it, will cut something. So the amount of energy or power you put behind the wave is called power density. Many companies do not tell you the power density of their instruments. Now, power can be delivered to the instrument by either one of two sources. It can be AC current, which is the type that runs your appliances in your kitchen, or it can be DC current, like the type that runs your battery-driven part of your computer. Now, AC current has some disadvantages. One is that it has a up and down movement of the current, depending on how many other people are using the line that day. And you have had what's called brownouts or spikes in your current on the AC current. If you have a brownout with a low-level laser system, you do not have the same amount of energy delivered as if the electrical input was constant. So it's very important that the instrument receive constant electrical input. Now it's also that same thing can happen with batteries. You can have a battery and you can have it fully charged and you have a, a steady amount of energy going into the laser. That will give you a certain amount of dose. We're going to talk about dose in another lesson, but that gives you a certain amount of dose. Now picture with me, if you would, a flashlight. The flashlight with a brand new set of batteries is bright white. You turn the flashlight on and off, on and off, and you leave it on and off for several minutes or an hour, and the light will become dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Now, in lasers, the light never becomes dimmer. 
but as the energy diminishes to the laser, you get a different laser output. And this severely affects the function of the laser. So when buying a laser, it's very important to know if the laser system is controlled by sophisticated computers, which constantly call for a steady amount of energy from the battery. In the Q laser series, the computer calls for energy steady energy no matter how many times you turn it on and off and when the battery is near dead it's still producing the same energy as it was when it was fully charged a very very important part called power density if your power density fluctuates the results will fluctuate right with it so be very careful when purchasing a laser to know that the laser has some type of computerized control of the power density now if you're going to get an AC alternating current 110 volt driven laser you cannot do the same thing with that as you can with a DC current that AC current interferes there's too much electromagnetic contamination coming around the wire the the cord that comes in to the laser and that will interfere with the subtle energy transfer of electrons to the cells so subtle energy is not easily produced by by the alternating current it is more easily produced by a, a dc current which is controlled by a computer in our next lesson we're going to talk about dosage